Hello, everybody. Welcome to the September 4th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee, our first of, of the fiscal year. Goodness, that seems crazy, doesn't it? Um, sounds like Julia is not with us. Hopefully, uh, Lemmy will join us at some point. Um, as we always do, we start off each meeting with uh, Sarah, can you hear me? You're you're skipping in and out. It seems like your your bandwidth oh. is super low. Like your picture's small. Okay. Um. How about can can you hear me now? Yes. If you um if you shut your picture off, I might give you a little bit more bandwidth. Okay. Sound coming in. You. Okay. Yep. Loud and clear. All right. Okay. Good. All right. I apologize for my technological issues. Um, so, uh, Sarah, there are no general public joining us. Is that correct? There, I see no one. No one. Since there is no one, we will have no general public comment. Since there are no minutes that have been sent to us, we will have no minutes either uh, at some point. Sarah will catch us minutes. I do have a few things that I wanted to uh, to mention before we get going to the main business at hand, which is to uh, look at the community preservation tradition and see what work we need to do on that, uh, what some of the big picture items are, and how to proceed with that. Um, before Before we do that, just welcome everybody back. As we know, we are all happy to be on it. Um, Kevin and Martha, thank you for re-upping and being appointed by your respective uh, commissions, historic and conservation, to represent those two. So thanks for sticking with us. Um, Chris Tate, you are, your appointment is up in November, and we are hope, hope, hoping that you will re-up uh, and continue to um, provide us with your great wit and wisdom and uh, and continue your membership here. Uh, Bev, as I think most of you know, uh, Bev Bates was the mayoral appointment. She has since uh, left the committee. The According to Sarah, there is no one uh, that has submitted a, a request to join the committee to the mayor in being on this committee uh, would encourage you to encourage them to submit their name um, to the mayor and she will uh, hopefully appoint them. It would be nice to have a full committee as we move on to our, our deliberations. Uh, speaking of deliberations, uh, there were 14, to my count at least, uh, 14 projects submitted for this. Of those 14, four, Sarah, and with help from the solicitor, deemed not uh, appropriate or not eligible um, for CPC funds. They included uh, an organ restoration, the musical organ restoration at First Church. Uh, the Northampton Community Gardens had requested uh, the painting of a mural on the tool shed, but that was not deemed a recreation uh, within the within the sort of rules of our of our recreation. Um, on West Street, center proposal for some renovation uh, as low for low-income housing. We cannot do renovations on low-income housing on units that were not um, uh, paid for at least in 
part by CDC funds. Cemetery uh, that was not, that came in on the historic preservation uh, request, but was not deemed historic because it's actually a new structure there. The 10 yeses, uh, and real quickly, was it for a preservation plan? Martha, I think you're the lead on that. Um, and oh, Sarah put in sort of in the queue and open space preservation courts, rehabilitation. They got wind of the pickleball, and now we're very sad and want to be rehabilitated. So we'll see about that. Uh, Maine's uh, field park um, flood resist resilience plan. Uh, a historic structures report for St. Mary's and the rectory. That's a big church on Elm Street. Uh, the Academy of Music gutter replacement expansion. Memorial Hall gutter replacement and expansion. Uh, Half for humanity coming ahead for uh, getting into Fitzgerald Lake. One of the ways to get into Fitzgerald Lake. Uh, for the affordable housing fund uh, and, and open space habitats and natural community signage. So I'm counting 10. Did I leave anything out, Sarah? Or is that pretty much it? I believe that's it. And I, in the, I'll in drop a, a link in the chat to the eligibility forms if anybody wants to take a look at those. I haven't um, filled out the eligible, not eligible yet, uh, but these are the versions that were submitted by applicants. Any questions for Sarah about any of those eligibility forms or why four of them were deemed ineligible? Chris, Helen? Uh, Sarah, Sarah, on First Churches, was that a result of the Acton decision? It was. Uh, so the, the city solicitor did, um, issued a, an opinion letter, which is also filed in the, um, in the eligibility forms folder, that because this is an interior portion of the church, couldn't be regulated by uh, any other type of municipal action, it would not be eligible for CPA funding. So it, there would potentially be some avenues to pursue um, exterior renovations, but something interior to the church and clearly critical to their religious mission would not be eligible for the CPA. Thank you. Any other questions for Sarah? Chuck? Um, Sarah, am I correct in assuming we'll get to see the opinion of the solicitor for those four that were not deemed worthy? So he only looked at um, the, the religious one. The other three were pretty clear cut, just not something that would be able to be funded with the CPA. So the, um, let me pull up the chart actually. Uh, so the, the rec department had, um, had requested... Uh, eligibility determination for a, a mural at, at a shed that was already installed at the community gardens, but that's not, you know, that the mural itself isn't furthering any of the uh, open space or recreation uh, values, so that wasn't eligible. Placing the shed there to put tools in would have been, uh, but the, the art on the exterior portion of it would not be. And it's for Okay, I just, I just, thanks for the clarification because it sounded to me like um, they had weighed in on all four. No, it was, it was just the one um, because the, you know the uh, that the uh, the organ inside the church was pretty clearly historic and was something that I think the historic commission would find is you know it is important to the history of the city um, and and absent the uh, anti-aid amendment and the Acton decision potentially would be eligible. Um, but I requested the solicitor's opinion on that one just because of the, the complications about that. Uh, but but the others just, they didn't fit in any of those eligibility boxes. They they just weren't part of that. Um, okay, like the, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the Paradise Pond Apartments, for whatever reason, you know, um, chapter 44B does not allow for rehab and restoration to community housing projects unless they were acquired or created with Community Preservation Act funds. Um, you know, it's still important work should, and definitely should happen, but unless there's a change to the enabling legislation, it's not something that would be allowed. Um, and similarly, the historic resources, I, um, 
it so that uh, Park Street Cemetery is definitely a historic resource, but placing a modern structure within it would not fit within the rehabilitation and restoration guidelines of the CPA. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Any other questions for Sarah? Martha? Uh, unmute yourself. My apologies. Um, Brian, I didn't hear all of what you said about the pickleball. Could you please repeat that? Or um, you broke up when you were explaining it to us. Um, I was attempting to make a joke that may have oh, fallen okay. flat. Oh, well, I, I want to hear the joke. I need a laugh. Well, the joke is that the JFK tennis courts felt remiss at uh, or being um, dissed with new pickleball courts, courts being planned. So they want an upgrade to keep, you know, uh, to keep up with 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 the pickleball courts, uh -huh. um, so it was not a good joke. It was really not worth repeating, and now I just embarrass myself. Thank you, Martha, uh, for that. But speaking of uh, pickleball, um, the as I think some of you may know from reading articles in the paper, or perhaps being involved yourself, uh, the, the pickleball courts are still uh, in the process of fundraising. The pickleball people uh, are out busily fundraising to try to. Uh, get up to the full amount that they that they have requested uh, set aside uh, there is um, uh, the 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 bid has not gone out yet and that the um, so so pickleball is still in limbo there's not been a bond put out yet for pickleball so we're still we're still waiting on that. <clears throat> uh, a couple other things. One, I had the really historic Northampton Shepherd Barn um, this summer. Other than the heat exhaustion that I suffered, uh, both were really uh, wonderful. It's a great use of the resource. It's a wonderful place to stage productions. They were very. Um, good about thanking CPC uh, and for, for the support that we have given them. So it was nice nice to see that. If folks, if they do it again, if there's any plays or any productions there, it's really worth going to. It's, it's, it's really pretty cool. Um, I also went to the wall raising for the Habitat Humanity uh, 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 structure house on Woodland Drive. Uh, here, a shout out. I was able to speak a few words on behalf of uh, of CPC um, at the at the at the wall raising. They called it. Uh, I had the the opportunity to lead members in a chant that I never thought I would ever lead people in, which was "Build the wall, build the wall." So, um, for what it's worth. Again, an attempted humor, which may fall flat. Speaking of Habitat for Humanity, there is a dedication uh, this Sunday, mark your calendar, this Sunday at 11 o'clock to 1230 at the Victoria uh, Bismarck Farm site. That's the one on 286 Burt's Pit Road. That's the single structure, not the three that are sort of further away from town. Uh, right, Sarah, there's only one. One house there, Victoria Bismarck. Is that correct? Uh, I get them confused now. There's so many projects going on. Is this the one that was yeah. at the former state hospital property? Uh, uh, yes, right across from sort of community uh, gardens there, right near the community gardens. Yes, that's uh, three, I believe. Oh, that is three. Oh, good. So that's 11 o'clock um, this Sunday, 11 to 1230, if folks want to uh want to head on over there another interesting uh place to drive by if you haven't seen it is laurel street uh remember all of the units that we help finance there and boy those buildings are going up quick 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 so it's really a transformation of a of a site into i can't remember it's four separate buildings i want to say 12 or is it 16 units uh something like that but if you haven't been to Laurel Street, certainly take a look at it. It's 
it's really pretty, pretty impressive. Okay. Um, let's see, that's it for my chair's report. Uh, Sarah, uh, we're on to review and approving this uh, fiscal year 25 set aside order that you will be bringing or that the council will be um, looking at. Is that is that correct? And can you just lead us through that, through what you sent to us and a quick explanation of how sure. you determine these set aside? Yeah. Um, let me bring that up so everybody can see it. The share button, the share button is more. Zoom keeps moving things. Hard to find. All right. So at, at the beginning of each fiscal year, um, CPC and the city council set aside the anticipated revenue that's coming in into the different accounts. And that allows the um, the CPC to make recommendations and the council to then allocate funding uh, to projects from those accounts. Uh, so this year we're anticipating um, uh, just over 2 million or 2.1 million um, in revenue, and that's 1.8 million uh, in local assessment, plus uh, 306,000 um, in an estimated state match, and that's about eight, uh, just over 17 percent. That's an early estimate from the Department of Revenue. If anything, it will be more. Uh, they're usually conservative with their estimates, but City Council needs to approve this in order to set the tax rate, so we don't have the ability to wait until we have more final numbers. Uh, and and as in years past, anything that comes in from the department from the the state above those numbers will um, not be available for spending this fiscal year. It will just sit until the the following fiscal year. Um, so from there, we set aside eleven percent of that total amount into each of the project reserve accounts. Recreation and open space are combined; they're technically just one. And we set aside 11% because that makes sure that that ensures that we don't spend too little um, money because we're required to do it 10% spend or set aside 10% or more. Um, and then 75,000 into the admin account that that's far more than we anticipate would be spent, but that's the, that's a static amount that's been uh, set aside as far as I can remember. Um, so then we, we put the rest of it, into the, the budget reserve that's available for spending on any project purpose. Um, we then pay principal and interest for uh, borrowing that has already occurred. The um, playground for all is not included here. Those payments won't begin until the following fiscal year. And that will uh, leave about 1.8 million from FY25 revenues available to allocate to projects. And that doesn't include any surplus from fiscal year 24. Thanks, Sarah. Um, questions for Sarah about those set asides? Uh, Chris Hellman. Um, Sarah, moving back up to the top, um, the first red paragraph, Northampton's FY24. Um, this is multiplied by 1.025 for Prop 2.5. Um, can you explain to me what's going on there? Uh, so Proposition 2.5, raises the the overall rate um so so we add that to um to get the total amount oh so prop two and a half is the underlying rationale for it this has nothing to do with an override or anything like that it doesn't no okay great thank you other questions for sarah So, the, so the, sure. in other words, Chris, that's the most that it, it could go up uh, in, in any fiscal year without an override. Yeah, no, I got I got it. Yep. I was just like, because I, I you know, I've heard discussions, several discussions about a, a potential override. And I just I wanted to make sure we weren't we weren't spending money. based no, on no, that So this is just reflecting the, the maximum levy. Yep. OK, thank you. Perfect. And the new growth estimate is just straight from the, the budget. Sarah, can you scroll? Can you scroll down to the bottom? 
Thank you. Um, will be retired. How much longer are we paying? Oh, I, I knew you would ask. I should have had that ready. Um, I will need a couple minutes to find that. But the, they're nearing the end of their their payment schedules. So right. those, those are starting to drop off pretty drastically. Great. And then once those are out, the only ones that we will, that bonding does not begin until uh, until the um, until the next fiscal year. Is that correct? So it's correct. So that, that bond hasn't been issued yet. That will go out uh, in the spring uh, with first payments due in FY26. Uh, so does that mean the pickleball courts will not be able to begin construction until uh, until when? Uh, so pickleball wasn't bonded. It was the playground for all. But that that funding is available immediately as soon as the committee makes the recommendation. All oh, right, right, right. Pickleball wasn't bonded. Yeah. Played so the around. so the work can begin, uh, but we won't actually do the borrowing process. Sorry. Um, thank you, Sarah. Any other questions for Sarah? Okay, so um, Sarah sent us uh, the community preservation plan. Uh, there's still work to be done, particularly on the historic preservation, right, Sarah? Oh, we, uh, we do need a vote on the um, on the transfers. Oh, sorry, council. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So this vote for. 11% uh, being set aside in each of the three required categories. Uh, I guess we need a motion for that. Correct. So moved. Thank you, Martha. A second. Second. Chris Holman. Uh, Sarah. All right. So roll call vote. Martha? Yes. Uh, Chris Tate? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Chris Hellman? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you for your work on that, as always. Um, so moving on to the Community Preservation Plan working session, Sarah sent us uh, a copy of her markups. Uh, the last time we looked at this was 2020, uh, 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 was it, Sarah? When was it? 22. 22. So there were not, not major changes that Sarah made, that, but uh, um, uh, there were certainly some. And I think, Sarah, you said we're still waiting for stuff from the Historic Commission. Is that correct? So um, I did incorporate uh, the findings of the of the historic preservation plan element of uh, the the, the uh, master plan, but I didn't receive until like just an hour ago comments from the recreation commission. I uh, since Julie has been traveling, um, the rec director had a hard time hooking up with her to to do those. Um, they they weren't really substantial that I could see. It was you know updates to include pickleball and and some other issues, and I can incorporate those into the the final for public discussion version. So Sarah, our goal tonight is just to uh, hopefully folks have had a chance to look at the document, perhaps to, or people to comment on any of the big picture items at the that they saw in looking at that, if there's any major issues that came up that we need to change. Um, and so the, the next step with this will be a, a public hearing. There was some spelling and typos. Uh, so next Sarah, step would, could, would be a public hearing you, where we, 
Ah. <laughs> Brian's bad with bandwidth is uh is not great. Um so the next step would be a public hearing where the, the public would be invited to comment on the, the needs and the possibilities of community preservation in, in Northampton. Um, you know, and as I think some of you know, some communities spell out particular projects that might be possible, but you know, that's never really worked out in Northampton because we're dealing with um, you know, really well vetted long-term plans and and um and other issues. So we, the committee's never felt it appropriate to try and call out those projects on their own, but rather, rather to talk about like, what could we do? Like what, what's legally possible? What have we done in the past? Where are we? What are some of the major issues that we're facing? So two weeks from now is the public comment session on the proposed plan. Uh, in the past, we've had, uh, I wanna say very sparse turnout in fact, sometimes nobody. Is that is that correct? Yes. Uh, do you do you anticipate folks wanting to weigh in? Community folks wanting to weigh in on? Yeah, it, it's on hard this? to say. I mean, reacting to a project um, or a proposal that someone is either really excited about or really doesn't like has always been the way that people have engaged with the community preservation committee. Most often, um, we do try to get the word out about the. Um, the public hearing and, and the plan, but the plans just aren't aren't as exciting as projects. That, that's what we've seen in the past. And will that be the only item on our agenda in two weeks? Um, yes, I believe so. Or a, I think there's a uh, question and answer for applicants if they're interested, but we typically also don't get a lot of input for that item. Mo mostly people who are applying for CPA funds um, Either don't you know don't avail themselves of, of that opportunity, or they've talked to me at, at length prior to applying. Thanks, sir. So, folks who had a chance to look at the sixty-something page document, uh, are there any big picture items that you want to share with all of us, particularly with Sarah, in terms of needing to be revised, or questions, or concerns, or Additions, subtractions, anything that pops to mind on any of the topics. Uh, Chris Tate. Yeah, I have a pretty big one. Uh, my my first name is spelled wrong. In the... What? So I'm I'm Christian Tate, not Christopher. I will fix that. Well, thanks for pointing that out. That is, I think we can, uh, don't have to deal with anything else that now that we've resolved that. Yeah, well, now I can yeah. rest easy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's always good. Uh, Jeff. Um, Chris, was that it for your- Yeah, that's it. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, I thought at the beginning, of the report, it kind of, when it started to go through the process, it re referred to calendar year and basically said the CPC has two sessions and one's in January and one's in September. And it almost implies that the real, the real session, the real initial, hey, we're getting into this is in January and it's actually right now in September. Um, and that's why that's when the money is is allocated, the transfer orders are made and we get into it. By the time you get to January, if you're an applicant and you're reading this, um, it's not clear that a lot of the a lot of the potential funding that you might be able to get is already gone with with the first session of the fiscal year. So I thought the plan should read um more along the lines of a fiscal year instead of a calendar year. That would be my first comment. And I'm not gonna go into typos because typos are typos, but um, in the public housing part of it, um, Northampton Housing Authority only had one or two lines and that's fine. But it said that the housing was primarily for um, elderly and disabled. And that's how it started. But it has a lot more than that now. And it has family housing. It has two, three, four bedroom 
um, facilities that are available for families at 80% of the AMI. And I just thought for clarification purposes to, to illustrate um, more of what's going on there that that should be mentioned. And that's all I had. Okay, I, I can easily make those changes. Yeah, the uh, the plan had and the, the funding cycle for whatever reason had always been uh, in reference to the calendar year. And I agree that that's confusing. Um, so if it makes sense to everyone, I can adjust that to make it um, make it clear that we're primarily dealing with a fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Great comments, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Martha? Yes, um, I sent um, individual comments to Sarah today, um, and I focused mainly, mainly on the introduction and the historic preservation part of it, obviously. Um, I guess my feeling about this is um, that the audience for this is pers uh, prospective applicants, correct? Um, and we kind of, as a committee, use this as a guideline, I suppose, as well. Um, but I think if it's something that the public, we want the public to use, um, I think the format of it is a little cumbersome. It's lengthy, it's dense. And I don't think this is something that we need to address necessarily right now, but I would think that we should think long-term about just simplifying it, making it a little bit more lively graphically. And the other thing that, um, and this may be all, already done, Sarah, and forgive me if it's not, but I think it'd be great to have an online tool um, that people could use that would access this information uh, because people are doing that so much more today than reading dense documents in PDF format, you know, downloaded or um, viewed on a device. So uh, those are my big comments about it. And I'm happy to work with you, Sarah, to try to um, make this a little bit more user-friendly. Maybe not in this version, maybe in the future. I don't know, but those are my thoughts. Um, Martha, what were you thinking of with regard to an online tool to access? Um, it just was a kernel of, <laughs> a kernel of thought. Uh, not, I haven't really thought about it in a lot of detail, but not um, not something that's interactive, but just so that the information is encapsulated in a very concise way that can be accessed online um, by applicants. And maybe, that, maybe that's already true. I didn't look to see whether that was the case, but um, it's a thought. I know, um, you know, some communities are, you probably know this, are putting their um, comprehensive plans online, uh, the whole plan in a sort of a, a interactive format or a, a much more web compatible format rather than just a document with a lot of text in it. Sure. And like, you mean like a story map type of, type of thing? Maybe that would be one way it could be done. Yeah. And we do have some limitations with the, the Civic Plus design of the, uh, the city website. Okay. Uh, we could link to another uh, place where we have like a, a story map or, or something a little bit more interactive. Or maybe if, if the um, technology gets um, amended or it's upgraded at some point, this is something we could think about long term. I think it would be helpful. Thank you, Martha. Those are really good suggestions. Seems like uh as technology improves and as people are more comfortable with that technology, it's a good, it's a good road to go down. Uh, Kevin, was that, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah. Unmute. Unmuted. Um, I, other than typos, I didn't have um, any uh, feedback about the, uh, the structure in the writing. The feeling that I got was that, uh, and um, let me think about how best to phrase this, that there was a lot of uh, uh, description of the pressing need for various kinds of shelter and housing. Um, and that for open space recreation, historic uh, uh, preservation, there was a fair amount of description about what has already been done. And so it seemed like the gap was biggest 
uh, in the part that was addressing shelter and housing. Um, and I'm wondering if, uh, if that is intentional um, and if this committee has ever prioritized, not quite to the extent of cre creating an RFP, but of saying, hey, this next couple of se uh, uh, sessions, we ought to really be boosting um, the applicant pool for uh, creating additional housing. That there's a lot of open, you know, 26, 27 percent of open of Northampton's land area is already protected. We've had all these major projects for historic preservation, to uh, Florence Field and other major wreck things. Um, and uh, whereas the uh, housing stuff has been kind of onesies, twosies, a little bit here, a little bit there. And I'm wondering if, in fact, that's something that we want to put the thumb on the scale a little bit and say, hey, we, we'd like to actually solicit um, more applications for that kind of spending. Uh, Sarah, your comments? All right. So soliciting applications is something that's come up in the past, but isn't something that the committee's ever moved forward with be, um, because of the, the structure of the funding rounds. Um, I'm not sure what effect a, an RFP might, or, you know, soliciting applications might have um, with regard to affordable housing, because development is, is really pretty complicated. Um, right. I, I think there are, our major partners that the city has, like, you know, Valley CDC, Habitat for Humanity, um, and, and a few others know the, the funding game, um, and, and how the structure works. And it, factor in CPA applications with their their pro forma and their development plans. And th there's just not a lot of people out there developing affordable housing. Um, so it, the well, issue is really the been affordable housing is big yeah. amounts of money and not the amounts of money yeah. we usually have to distribute. Yeah. And, uh, the issue has never really been the available funding at the municipal level. It's available funding for the broader picture uh, because the city, the CPA and other municipal funds couldn't hope to fill that gap and the, the bandwidth and capacity of affordable housing developers. Thank you. Really good comment, uh, Kevin. Anyone else want to comment on that affordable housing? Uh, I think we all recognize the need for additional affordable housing. It's certainly in the news constantly. Um, are, are we doing enough to make it known that we are a source of funding, at least startup funding, for uh, organizations such as Valley CDC. I mean, they seem to know as Habitat is, is coming back with another project. Uh, is there more that folks think we can be doing to elicit proposals or to get the word out that, hey, we've got, uh, this is a priority for us? I, I would add also that um, the, CPA Chapter 44B restriction on spending um, rehab and restoration funds on community housing unless it was created with the CPA is a major impediment um, to creating an, um, additional supply. And you know, there's a lot of developers who are realizing a, a need to do some really pretty significant renovations to housing that that's getting you know, pretty old. Did, you know, Meadowbrook was is approaching 50 years old at this point. Um, and I know that developer is looking for funds. There, there's other developers who are, are looking to make you know, major repairs to make their um, their developments you know, safer and more energy efficient, but none of that work is uh, allowable under the CPA. What is the process, Sarah, for changing regulations or policy at the state level? Is that something that we could weigh in on? Did yeah, I mean, we could certainly, I know Stuart Zaganor is coming in um, at one of the meetings in October to talk about what the coalition has been doing, and that's something that you could certainly bring up with him. Uh, you know, we're seeing a need for this in Northampton, and it's not allowed. Uh, a similar change was made to the recreational um, section of the statute, where formerly, unless something was created with the CPA, you, you couldn't make any rehab or, or restoration to it. So if you had an old playground and you needed to make a new one that wasn't allowable, but so many communities across the state were seeing a need to re replace this aging failing infrastructure that, uh, that, that change was made to the enabling legislation. So that's something that would need to be done for community housing as well. 
So we could bring this up to the statewide coalition. We could bring it up to our local state senator and state congresswoman as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. So you um, could talk to the legislative delegation or a pro or the, the coalition would probably be the, the two major avenues to consider that. Okay. Um, is there someone who would want to work with Sarah in terms of drafting a letter to uh, Comerford and Sabadosa, at least, and perhaps to Stuart Sagamore as well, outlying our uh, position, and I th assuming that we are in agreement on that to allow affordable housing uh, monies in, with, with C CPC monies to go for projects that were not built CP initially with CPC funds. I'm looking at Jeff in particular. As yeah, our housing. I'm, on, I'm on board. I just need a quick tutorial from Sarah and I'm, I'm on board with it. Yes. Great. Okay. Sarah, you feel comfortable working with Jeff? To, sure. And I could be helpful. Yeah, I would like to be part of that as well. That'd be great. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that to our, bringing that to our attention. And, and if um, I could, I'll just add a, 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 a tangential comment that, um, there's, you're talking about the habitat houses that are currently um, about to be constructed. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, my wife Sally uh, was the chair of a circle of care for an Afghan family um, that had to get out of Kabul uh, with two hours notice with nothing but the clothes on their back. Um, and she'd been working with them. She's no longer chair of the circle of care, but she continues to work with them now a couple of years later. And they are the ones who won the Habitat Lottery and are putting sweat equity into one of these new houses that is just getting started right now. So, and in fact, Sally is in the next room on a Zoom call for uh, Habitat Orientation. So um, just, it's a small world. Great story. Thanks, Kevin. So going back to big picture items for the uh, CPC plan. Any other big ones that we want to recommend that Sarah tweak and hopefully have available in the for the folks to look at two weeks from now? Martha? One of the things that um, um, I was reminded of, I guess, when reading through the draft was again in the up, up in the front with the process about um, budgets, because we, in my memory, recent memory, we, we seem to kind of get stuck on those a lot in the sense that there's not enough information or it's not clear or we don't know where the numbers are coming from. I just wondered if others had um, that uh, reaction to it, you know, as we've gone through these the last few years, and if there were any suggestions about it, um, yeah, that was my question. More of a question, I guess, or to see if anybody felt the same way. Chris Hellman? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, what Martha just said. I, yeah, I think you're right. I think that, um, and maybe that requires better guidance from us. Um, there are some groups, particularly the ones that do this regularly, who are very good at it, and there are some who just aren't as good at it. Um, I want to circle back to something that Martha said earlier, which is about, you know, the the sort of the accessibility of the document. And in in the past, when I've worked on other things where there's a document of 64 pages, uh, some form of executive summary has always been useful. I'm not sure that that's the model we want to go with here because i think in an executive summary what you're really doing is cliff notes and i think what would be better and i really appreciate your thoughts on this martha i thought that was a good point to raise uh would be something that's more of a uh got, yes a summary but interspersed with this is why this is important or this is why this, you need to pay attention to this part and this is where you should go to look at it. So it's almost like a executive summary with 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 um, a modest tutorial. Um, but again, I don't think that's something for this go around. I think it's just something to think about as we move forward. Um, I always as always, I appreciate my colleagues comments. Um, I, we really do make things better when we work together. It's it's it just it always impresses me. Uh, the one item that 
um, I wanted to raise as a sort of big picture thing. Um, and it's not been a topic that was necessarily a priority for me, but Julia has raised on a couple of occasions um, a greater discussion of this question of whether one round per fiscal year or two rounds per fiscal year would be um, appropriate um, to make, retain the model we've got or to go with a, 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 um, a single round. Um, I, I don't want to enter that conversation without her here because I know that she's actually put some thought into it, um, but I'm wondering if this isn't the, the, the mechanism for that discussion. So. I think it is appropriate to have that discussion in regard to the 2024 plan. I mean, that would be a, a, a major change in how we do business. Uh, if we went from two rounds to one round or two rounds to three rounds, um, or just as projects came up, we would act on them. So it would, I think it's a, it's a pretty significant, uh, change if in fact we were we were to do that um chris you're suggesting we wait for 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 julia julia is the one that i think was the was the initiator of that um so maybe it makes sense to wait for two weeks and have yeah and i have I, yeah sorry yeah, and I haven't spoken to her about this i just know that she's raised it i'm not even sure that she's committed to the idea but but my my recollection is that you know her concerns were about um, um, when people came to us the 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 amount of resourcing that was available and that if you came later in the year the money just wasn't there and yada 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 and I, I think that that's a legitimate argument I I don't want to get into a debate with somebody who's not here I actually think that there are drawbacks to having a single round as well um, but I but I think it's a I think it's a worthwhile I think it's a worthwhile discussion. Getting back to Jeff's comment of sort of uh, switching around and, and leading with the September round as the first of the of the fiscal year, I wonder, Sarah, if you could make a note that um, there's a set amount of money available that it perhaps behooves applicants to get in while they're getting as good, get in early. Um, I'm not sure there is any mention of that. You know, we have this fixed amount of money. It's going to go. If we have great projects. You may be left with nothing for the second round. Just make sure people know that we're not, we don't divide half of it in one round and half of it in another. I think we have intended to do that a few times. But um, if, in fact, we, we stick with two rounds, maybe making mention of that uh, might make sense. Do other people... Have comments or about um, and and I think Chris's suggestion of waiting for for Julie is a good one. We can we can come back to this issue in two weeks, but in the meantime, do people have thoughts they would like to share about going to one round, or going to three rounds, keeping things the way that they are? Martha, I um I can understand. Um, the thought about doing one, it certainly streams line, streamlines that, um, but I also recall in the years I've been on this, that with the two rounds, there've been many applicants that, you know, we've delayed or we've said, come back, um, in the, you know, the spring and we'll look at you again. And, and we've funded some very good projects that way. Um, and it allows people to not have to wait a year. Um, it gives them a you know shorter window, so I think there's some value in that. Any other comments from other folks? Maybe we can continue this that conversation about two rounds once again. Hopefully, Julia can join us in a couple weeks. Uh, I had one um, one comment I wanted to make. And I think it was with historic preservation, where it says in the document that um, se that that uh, no more than seventy five percent of the funding for a project should come from CPC. That twenty five percent needs to come from outside sources, and nowhere else do we say that in 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 any of the other categories in terms of 
conservation or recreation or affordable housing, do we say that at least 25% needs to come from out, outside sources? We encourage that. That's, I think all of us recognize that outside or additional funding is, is, uh, is, is wonderful. But I guess I'm wondering why that's in there just for historic preservation. And I don't recall that we've ever even thought of that. I think proposals have come up to us and we may have fin uh, you know, funded most of it. So did anyone else find that? Sarah's gonna screen save with us, thank you. Um, I think at one point there was a desire to have some additional criteria to evaluate historic preservation projects specifically. Um, and this was really lifted from another community um, with some edits. Um, but you know, none of these need to stay in there. They're not things that the committee feels is appropriate. So yeah, Brian, I, I, I actually circled that on, I printed the historic preservation portion up and circled that because I, I was curious as to whether that was a guideline that it, cause I, I, I thought it was interesting too, but it also says should rather than would or can't or anything like that. So it sounds like a, you know, suggestion rather than a, a limitation. Um, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't go back and compare it to the other areas. And I, um, I don't know that there aren't good reasons to single out historic, but, um, uh, particularly on small, on small grant things where uh, our ability to fund 100% of it is 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 fairly straightforward, um, but I, I yeah I, I I saw that as well, so I was kind of curious as to what the genesis of that was. Yeah, I I think it was in reaction specifically to a, a few um, applications for privately owned historic resources, hmm. and the committee was really sort of struggling with how to evaluate those. Like, yes, the historic commission supports. The project conceptually, but how do we evaluate whether an infusion of CPA funds would be appropriate and what other guidance could we look at to figure that out? But but now that we're a little bit removed from it, you know, feel free to go through it with a fine tooth comb and strike anything that no longer makes sense. I guess I feel awkward that, that it's awkward having that in only for historic preservation. I think uh, it, 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 it can read, is there a demonstrated financial need for this project? Uh, are additional funds available that can uh, aid in the project's total cost? Because I think that's what we look at in all of the projects that we fund. Uh, and I guess I would rather see that unless we want to say, again, I, I don't see why, why we're signaling out historic preservation on this one. Uh, Martha, I'm curious as to your thoughts on this. Yeah, I think um, this could come out. And I think the next bullet kind of gets to the gist of what we're looking for, what other funds will support the project. That's really what it's about. You know, are we, are there, have they made an attempt to try to get matching funds for this? And if not, why? I think that's the question. Are people in support of that? Thumbs up? Yeah, looks like. Okay, uh, Kevin, yeah. Okay, great. And maybe to maybe to amplify it a little bit, add a sentence that said says something along the lines of uh no, nah, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, never mind, shut up. Other big picture items for the uh, for this plan. Again, Sarah, thanks for putting your time into it. And uh, and again, I think we have a couple more weeks to continue to submit stuff to you. Is that is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll I'll add the draft plan um, to the website. I'll send everyone a link, but the. The public hearing isn't like the, the last date that the committee could make um, changes to the plan. So you wouldn't need to adopt it at that meeting, but that would just be the public input session. 
and refresh our memories. What is the process for adopting a revision of this plan? Are you just vote? Just a vote to approve. Okay. And we would not do that at the meeting two weeks from now. We would wait for public input if there is any. Yeah, you you could do it either way. I mean, there, there's been occasions where the, the committee has approved it the same night because no one was there and they were happy with the draft that they had. Uh, but you could certainly take some additional time and think about it. And you can also uh, update it at any point. I and mean, there's no requirement to have a public hearing every time it's updated. But there is a requirement to have a public hearing about the overall needs um, and possibilities about the CPA, which is folded into the CPA plan update process in, in most communities. Um, sorry about the phone ring. Uh, there is a um, concern on my part that the plan itself is intimidating, particularly for first time applicants. And if I was someone wanting to apply, I would, I would be really, uh, um, yikes, look at this, 64 pages. What, what do I know? And, and I, I added a, a, a paragraph in the, um, uh, sort of the opening statement saying, yes, it's going to be intimidating. We want to work with you, uh, call Sarah day and night. I, I think you should give out Sarah's home cell phone for, for that, um, uh, because it is intimidating, and I, I think we we've, we've struggled in the past with with uh, acknowledging that it's the same old same players who come to us uh, um, year after year, and that we we don't see new players involved. and And I don't know if it's because the report, the the CPC plan, you know, or the application process scares people off. I'm not sure it does. And I don't know any way around it. I mean, it's a complicated process. It's a complicated procedure. We've got a lot of state and local guidelines that 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 uh, that require our due diligence and applicants' due diligence. But I guess it's a thought I'd thrown just would throw out. I think Martha, you brought up in one of your earlier earlier comments about you know can we make this more in the future user friendly is there a way that people can point and click on things and it'll go through and i and i i, I don't know but it just it does um I, I think sarah's done a great job with this document this this and that's not what i'm meaning to say but i do think it's intimidating and i do think it's scary and i do think it could be a turn off to smaller groups uh who 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 don't know how to, or don't have the resources to, to or don't think they have the resources to uh, to apply. Any, anybody else want to touch on that one? We need an FAQ. How to apply for a CPA grant. And I'm going to take a crack at it. <laughs> Nice. And, uh, and although the although Civic Plus does have some limitations with the the city website, um, you know, because it, it's set up for municipalities and, and agendas and, and all of that fun stuff, it does have a special FAQ tool. So if um, people are willing to help me put those together, I can definitely get that in a semi user friendly format on the, the website. Chris, great suggestion. Thank you. Even greater suggestion that you're you're going to be the one that will take a crack at. It, so. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves a volunteer. Yeah, great, good. Um, uh, I mean, and I would just add that there is a possibility that someone could apply for CPA funds and and never have read the plan, and that probably happens pretty frequently. Um, but in, an informed applicant often makes a, a better applicant. Um, so I have tried to put the most critical information on the the website. So if, if anybody wants to take a look at that and, and give me some suggestions, I, I can update that, you know, anytime. I mean, I think that, again, going back to the plan, not the website, I think um, really boiling it down to what's essential information to give out to um, applicants. Um, you know, this is the law. This is what um, we funded in the past. This is what we're interested in. Um, and you know, here's how you go about it. I mean, it's it's. I just think it has to be boiled down to some very simple steps, 
and we need to give that some thought. And I've had, I'm happy to work with you, Sarah, on that. Um, it just might take a while, but yeah. Great. Thank you, Martha, for volunteering, Chris for volunteering, and everybody else. Um, any other big picture comments regarding the uh, 2024 plan? Any other last thoughts regarding this working session? I think people brought up some really good suggestions and uh, really good comments. And uh, and again, Sarah, you've done a marvelous job in putting this together. It can only get better. So thank you for your work and your ongoing work. Anything else on the plan? Okay. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Uh, Chris, Hellman. Uh, you're muted. So I heard when you were going through the 10 projects that um, were going to be eligible, uh, the mention of Memorial Hall. Um, where are we? in the process of communicating with the city with regards to how we're gonna approach these in future requests. So to reiterate, uh, Chris, it was both the Academy of Music and Memorial Hall for gutter replacement and expansion. So those are two separate proposals uh, looking at the, the water issue and where water is going and the problem with with water coming into the building. Uh, Sarah, you want to tackle that? I know you've made it clear to some of the folks what our feelings have been. Sure. So that the letter that was reviewed um, and approved as a follow up to the Memorial Hall uh, partial funding last round was provided to the mayor, finance director uh, and head of central services. So I um, I haven't followed up with them since then, um, but they are, you know, they're they are definitely aware of the the committee's concerns and what was reiterated in that letter. Uh, and and I can reach out to them separately when when I let them know that yes, this is this is an eligible project. You know, but don't forget, you know, th these were some concerns that the, that the committee had and some other things they wanted to see. I just think they need to know that at least one member of the committee is not going to view this in a vacuum and um, they should, they should expect that. Two members are not going to um, view this in a vacuum. Make that three. Four to chapter Four. five. Brian, <laughs> Chris. I'm, I'm waving my hand, but you can't see it. So yes. Uh -huh. I, I will say I like that it was at least a finite project and not just like fund the entire yeah. thing. So at least they're looking at one piece of it. I don't know how historic the gutters are. Um, that's another issue. I I was interested to see that one of the uh, names for the on, on the applicant list was uh, Ben Weil, and Ben is the new climate action project acquisition. Is that what his title is? Kappa, is that right? Uh, uh, climate so, Action and Project Administration Department. Administrate. So all city projects are now coming through the lens of climate action and climate change. Is that correct, Sarah? Yes. Yeah. In a, in a nutshell. So that's a that's that's a big change for for the city and perhaps for us. So so we'll, we'll see. Uh, thank you, Chris, for. Bringing that up. Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? So I, I also have one other question. Um, I, and again, I think I heard this um, correctly, but again, Brian, you were breaking up a bit. The Saint, that St. Mary's is coming in for HSR, historic social reports for the, um, the church and the rectory? It, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, it's the private developer whose name right. I can't remember. Who uh, is, is Perry? Yeah, yeah. Is coming. Yeah, historic structures report, both for the yeah, both for the church, the church and the uh, as well as the rector. Uh, okay. 
and Sarah indicated their plans or potential plans for the rectory to turn it into uh, almost like a Airbnb housing, not a hotel, yeah. but uh, yeah. and then no plans for the main uh, the main church itself. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I had some initial conversations with the with the developer about possibilities and whether there was any way for CPA funds to be provided. Um, and stepping back and taking a, a more holistic look at both buildings or the historic structures report seemed to him to be a, a good first step. And that's not something that he would finance himself. I, um, I, I guess I'm jumping the gun here, but I, I mean, they've been determined eligible, right? So, okay. That would certainly be a, a question to ask during okay. the review process. Great. Hold that thought, Martha. Um, it's a it's a good one. Uh, any other business? Well, happy two more weeks of summer, two and a half weeks, something like that. Uh, so summer's not over. Take advantage while we can. Uh, Hopefully folks can, again, reminder, two reminders, this Sunday at 11 at uh, 286 Birds Pit Road for the Habitat dedication. And once again, if anyone knows anyone who would like, no, love to be on this committee um, as a mayoral appointment, getting uh, having them submit their name to the mayor uh, and sooner is better so we can get a, have a full committee on board for our uh, our first round here. Um, with that being said, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Kevin. And a second? Thank you, Martha. Uh, and Sarah, thank you for your work. And we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sarah. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.